All right, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. This is going to be your Monkey Minute for uh, May 1st, 2022. And so without further ado, let's get over to the headlines around the world that are basically uh, not going to make the mainstream media for the most part. These are pretty interesting ones. Uh, starting off today, this is actually uh, the White House is talking about Iran is just weeks away from having their nuclear uh, missile program up and running which is a very bad thing for the rest of the world. But uh, I do find it kind of interesting. You may remember that it was the Kenyan and his administration uh, on his way out the door that pumped uh, a obscene amount of money into that program and uh, uh, plain loads of cash, I think is how they called it. But uh, And then, of course, Trump came in, shut it all down, which was the right thing to do. Uh, we shouldn't be giving a terrorist state nation uh, Money to begin with to develop their work, uh, their nuclear uh, weapons, but nonetheless, it, it has happened, and uh, we're trying to uh, figure out how to get out of it. But uh, I do find it interesting that uh, Jake Sullivan, who is the U.S. National Security Advisor, uh, he says that uh, this whole issue is a direct impact of pulling out of the nuclear deal, making us less safe, giving us less visibility. Uh, I think, if you remember correctly, they're the ones that actually started the whole nuclear deal. So, uh, yeah, so if we're pulling out of it, uh, making us less safe, no, nah, I don't think so. This is uh, ridiculous. It's absolutely crazy to think that this could even take place. But anyway, nonetheless, uh, that's the headline. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't see that really. Mainstream media talking about that, do we? All right, now get over here to the Chinese stocks. They're saying the yuan commodities are crashing and uh, – basically plunging the country into its dark, darkest moment in decades. Uh, just to kind of show you, uh, we've talked about this, we were just saying how all the ships are sitting out on the, on the shore, nothing's moving. Uh, their economy is pretty much collapsing uh, as they roll into beyond a month worth of shutdowns. There are certain elements that are starting to move. We see the ship flow uh, starting to pick up a little bit, but there's still a ton of ships sitting outside. Um, off the coastline that uh, are not going anywhere yet. So uh, this is far from being over. Uh, it looks like their economy is now in free fall mode, which is going to really impact the rest of the world. It'll be interesting to see what it does to our own U.S. stocks and futures uh, this coming week with that situation unfolding. So again, nobody's talking about this uh, because it's going to impact everybody else. And <laughs> it's just kind of crazy to think this is a pretty big news cycle. And the fact that you would think they'd really be front and center on talking about this. So, all right. Now, this is the other piece to this. China's manufacturing output drops to the lowest in two years. Well, duh. Uh, you shut the country down, and uh, for a prolonged period of time, it's going to happen. Uh, but they're saying now that it's starting to contract uh, in terms of what they measure it as, uh, and they're saying it's because of a decline in pro production and demand. Yeah, that's because nobody's working and nobody's producing anything. So that's part of the problem. Now, Keep in mind, too, that uh, we had to talked about the Evergrande situation going on back in October and the fact that uh, Evergrande is the largest real real estate company in the world um, in terms of assets. And they are responsible for about 26.9 percent of China's GDP. And the fact that that one had gone uh, defunct uh, on their uh, ability to pay uh, everything back. That happened last last year. They've been slowly trying to bleed that down in incremental steps to not have their economy collapse and have everything plunge because that was actually going to impact the rest of the world. And so uh, they say it was very similar to what they expected, the 2008 bubble that, that happened. And so now you've got that happening. You've got this going on. Uh, this is basically going to send them into a very bad economic period. And, of course, as you know, What's the best way to get out of a bad economy? War, right? It always happens that way. So now speaking of Chinese, it looks like they were selling off these missiles. We saw the aircraft actually go into Serbia and deliver these missile systems. Serbia is now showing off these Chinese missiles amid buildup concerns in the Balkans. Now, one of the things that uh, is interesting is that uh, Serbia is not on friendly terms with NATO. And the reason for that is because back in 1999, NATO bombed the daylights out of uh, their uh, location there uh, in Serbia. And so uh, evidently between Serbia and Kosovo, uh, there is a lot of rift going on. Of course, Kosovo, 
uh, declared its independence back in 2008. And uh, I don't think the Serbians are very happy about that. And of course, Serbia is very pro-Russia. And so this is going to be a very interesting uh, dynamic that enters into the region. Uh, adding those missiles into that region is actually a very bad thing uh, because of the location of it. But if that area goes hot as well, we could have multiple conflicts in the European, southern European region, so or the Baltic, so to speak, uh, which would be very, very interesting because of our prepositioned assets in those regions. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's get over here to the drought monitor. I just want to show you, we've been talking about crops and crops failures and food shortages and things like that. Uh, the drought monitor is actually saying now uh, that the, the cool, wet conditions delay corn planting in the Midwest. And uh, they've actually, it's, it's not a good situation because they're behind schedule. So um, this just adds to the layers of other issues that we already have going on. But it's just a data point we need to pay attention to uh, because if they're not producing the corn, um, you know, that's stuff that we use for feed. We use it for uh, gas or ethanol, things of that nature. And it's a pretty big export for the U.S. too. So anyway, just another uh, agricultural data point. All right. And uh, let's get over here to the watchers, which this is uh, an interesting deal. India is now having a heat wave causing the worst energy crisis in six years. Uh, this is, I mean, this is a man-made, clearly. Um, but they're saying they've had temperatures uh, upwards of 114 degree Fahrenheit and that it's just continued on. Um, I didn't know this, but India is actually the number two uh, largest energy consumer on the planet. <laughs> so... So many people there. Um, but yeah, this is uh, not a good situation for them. And especially given the fact that, you know, this heat ties into their ability to grow crops. You end up having uh, a lot of things that fail when you get uh, higher elevated uh, temperatures. So anyway, we'll keep our eye on this one again. Uh, that is a, a large populace. And um, uh, of course, with all the other energy crises going on around the world right now, this is the timing could not be worse, right? All right, and last up, we're gonna talk about the volcanic activity going on around the planet. Now, um, I point out the volcanoes because if you go look at the Day of the Lord, uh, it is very reminiscent of um, that activity taking shape here uh, on our planet. And so um, that is, uh, there are a lot of things and aspects that pull into this. For example, Revelation 6, 12, it talks about a great earthquake and then the sun becoming black as sackcloth and the full moon like blood. Uh, but notice here, Joel 230, wonders in heaven and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. Uh, there's a, a lot of references within the Bible that are very um, reminiscent of a volcanic eruption. And so that's why I point these out. Uh, it's uh, the levels of volcanoes that are erupting around the planet right now is higher than we've ever seen in our history. Um, there are some 45 active volcanoes right now, uh, and of that, we see anywhere from 7 to 14 on any given time frame uh, of them producing ash into our atmosphere. Uh, if those all hit at the same time and start to produce a lot of ash, it will change the temperature here on the planet, which becomes very critical. So um, something we need to be watching, nothing we can really do about it, but I just uh, wanted to point these out. Those are game changers. They're true climate changers. So, uh, but yeah, this thing uh, evidently just had the largest eruption it has seen uh, in the last several weeks. And uh, they say it's actually erupted at least 21 times in recent weeks, uh, but they're saying this one was the largest yet, which sent them into this uh, <laughs> level three, which is pretty bad. Uh, this thing is surrounded by water, as you can see. Uh, if it goes, more than likely, if it's a large eruption, it could actually send a tsunami wave um, that would go probably in a, a lot of different directions around the planet. So, not good. All right. Well, hey, listen, that's going to be it. Uh, stay tuned as things start to change by the day. Crazy world we live in. But uh, remember, God is good, and he has a sovereign plan for all of us. And uh, we just need to uh, remember that he is in charge and not us. And uh, his plan will always prevail. So, all right, listen, be safe out there. God bless. Monkey out.
check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.